Joining us now, Garrett Tuje, BYU football offensive line coach out on the recruiting trail. He's also a Twitter superstar. Coach Tuje, welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. <laughs> I uh, love BYU Sports Nation. Great to be on. <laughs> Man, we, uh, I, know, I don't know if you just heard it, but we were talking about Manasseh Tungafasi, and uh, I want to know, what was your reaction to the initial news of BYU football signing that guy? I, I mean, I, I don't know if we can even say it on television. I, I was so <laughs> excited. I, I, can't, I mean, there is 6'7", 325, fast, bounds like a deer if you've ever get a chance to see him run. And he's a little bit nasty. He's got a little tease on in him, so I'm excited. I, I mean, I met with the kid when he was out here for his official visit, and I say, man, he just looked me dead in my eye, and he's coach, or dead in my eyes probably better, <laughs> looked me dead in my eyes and said, coach, I promise you, every single day I will give you 100% of what I have. And I was like, when I say that's all I need. And so we had a chance to get on the board and talk some little shop, and he's a, he's a bright kid, and he understands the game, and, and – uh, It'll be exciting to see his uh, his experience unfold. Nice, Coach. Uh, what were some? Uh, walk us through the, the the process of recruiting him, and uh, were you guys able to see any film um, to, yeah. to come up with your decision of offering him a scholarship? Yeah, so it, it's a great story, actually. So Coach Mendenhall and his family have a deep connection with the islands, and so it means a lot to him. So every two years, we send out Coach Atawai and Coach Kapusi to go see some Samoa, Tonga, Fiji, New Zealand. And so Manasseh had decided to go to another school. Uh, and then Coach Kafusi, when he was out there visiting, uh, his dad heard that Coach Kafusi was in on the island. And so he said, hey, you know what? You need to hit him up. BYU is, BYU's come out here. No other schools have come out here. You need to go talk to Coach Kafusi and hit him up on Facebook and, and see – you know, what's going on if they're still interested. Because I think it, it, it weighs heavy that they would come all the way out here to see you. Um, and so, sure enough, one thing led to another. And the next thing you know, we got an official visit booked. And I, I, I was out of Pro Bowl when this went down. I was, I just so had I couldn't even, I can't even tell you how happy I was. <laughs> because just to be able to get a, get a guy like that on campus at BYU, uh, huge, man. So we're, we're excited. And when we sat down, when he came on his official visit, you know, we were talking a little shop, like I said earlier, and I told him, I said, you give me that effort, and I'm going to make sure you get your tail on the plane to Lincoln. So, I mean, it, it's going to be fun, exciting, and, and uh, I can't wait. Can't wait. I feel like a sculptor at a potting wheel right now. So, I'm very excited. <laughs> Garrett 2J, BYU football offensive line coach, joining us while he's on the recruiting trail. BYU just got news of signing a 6'7", 322-pound Manasseh Tungafasi last Friday. And the excitement is high. Uh, Coach, I do want to talk about specifically, he, he's listed as an offensive lineman. Um, at 6'7", 322, where, where do you place him on the line? What do you want to do with him there? Yeah, the, I, the thing is, you can see in those pictures, he's got long levers and he's got really long arms. So he'll be an edgy guy for us. He'll be an offensive tackle. We'll start there. And uh, he's, his footwork's impeccable. I mean, the guy does an amazing job of moving his feet. He's got great change of direction, lateral movement, and he bends very well. So we're going to start him off at tackle, and so that way uh, you know, he can get us some really good push on the backside of our run game and then also to extend the edge of the pocket so Taysom can throw BBs all over the yard. Nice. Brian and I want to know if there was any pushback from Coach Kafusi about him being a defensive end. <laughs> <laughs> well, there may have been, but that was I, – I, I went straight to the top on this one. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I was a direct link to Coach Mendenhall saying, listen, we're all on the same page here, right? <laughs> and he assured me. So, yeah, so I that, cut out so, the middle man. So that's how, you win, that's how you win the battle. I was going to ask you if there, you guys, like, arm wrestle or something, you know, if you guys oh, do no. something for it, but you went straight to the man in charge. Oh, so you got, well, you got to have the secret bat line. You know, you got to have the, the secret <laughs> – I was all over texting that, calling that until I made him answer. So <laughs> Fair. Fair enough. it was all over him. We asked uh, our listeners on BYU Sports Nation today, what are the pros and cons of BYU targeting athletes without serious prior football experience? Because you know, yeah. there's a gamble to this, and it's going to cost you know, some tender, loving care for guys like this who, who need the extra coaching. What are the pros and cons to something like this? Yeah, you know, and that, that's a great question. And, I, and I'll tell you, you know, like, like I alluded to earlier, 
you can't you can't coach teach six seven. You can't teach three twenty five. I mean, the guy looks great in the pictures, right? So it's not like he's a bad three twenty two. He's a great looking three twenty two. Yeah. He's nasty. He's got a little bite in his bark, you know, and he and he wants to be great. So those are all great things, the athletic ability and stuff like that. And again, there's 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 key words that we have that I'll say that mean a whole paragraph worth of information. So once he committed to BYU, I sent him out a bunch of flashcards um, so he could get with our lingo and things like that. And again, it, there's going to take, there's going to be a learning curve. Um, but I mean, his will, uh, he fits right in with coach men and all with his will and his desire to be great. And then I just said, Hey, we're going to use every single second. The NC2A will allow us to make sure you get on that plane to Lincoln, Nebraska. So, you know, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a little bit of a gamble, but again, I really like, really like our chances because he's such a tremendous athlete and he's nasty. And those things, like I said, if, if you know, a kid's a great athlete and he's afraid to put his nose to the fan, then, you know, then that, that could be really bad. But this kid, he'll, he'll, he'll hit you. And I love guys that'll hit you. Coach, do you have a, a game plan for him when he comes uh, uh, on campus? Uh, do you have something mapped out where uh, he's going to spend a certain amount of time with these players or you guys are going to have a certain amount of time, uh, you know, blocked out one-on-one -on -one to get him up yeah. to speed? Oh, absolutely. And I think, you know, one of the things that I've always had a great, great success with is having the older parent, older players mentor the younger players and teach them. And, and I think, you know, the greatest mastery of, of knowing what you're supposed to do is being able to teach others. So really excited with that, but absolutely have a day by day plan where we'll get him up to speed. I know that he's getting some things in order back home and he'll be out here uh, as soon as he can to start training with coach Wintrick and, and again, like I said, every second that, that we can use, has, we've put together a plan to get him up to speed with um, the lingo and, and, and the style of play we have offensively at BYU. Coach, we can't end this interview without addressing something that uh, I'm pretty fired up about, uh, and it starts with T. John Karoma. How does a freshman All-American, the only freshman to start every game at center last year at the D1 level, not make the Rimington Trophy preseason watch list? Yeah, that's a great question. And first off, you gotta, you know, you gotta commend those that made the list. But I love it. You don't think that there hasn't been a day that's gone by since that list has come out that I've shot TJ on a text message saying, <laughs> oh, "Nobody, nobody in the world even knows who you are anymore. They don't even know who you, you were. All that in a bag of chips six months ago, and now they don't even know who you are." So I love keeping them in that cage and just poking and prodding them and and getting them motivated that way. But, you know, again, it, it's awesome to be recognized that way. But to me, nothing in life is where you start. It's where you finish. And I'm more interested in where he ends the year than he starts the year. So good motivation. And, again, I think if you ask T. John, I don't think he even really cares. Um, he just cares about his team. He cares about his teammates. He cares about his O-line brotherhood. And he wants to make sure Taysom stays clean. So those are the things that I think are higher on his priority list. Uh, great stuff. From Garrett Tujay, offensive line coach, we wish you the best uh, as you wrap up recruiting, coach, and uh, hopefully your, your diet is okay out on the recruiting trail as well. <laughs> it's all about stick and move, man. you got to stick and move. <laughs> got to stick and move. <laughs> you guys are awesome. Thanks for having me on. You got it, coach. Thanks.